here from GoalieTrainingPro.com. Uh, just seeing if anybody's around on this Sunday afternoon. Uh, I was just sitting up over there. You can see my computer doing some program design. And it's a totally nice afternoon. There's a little cloud right now, but uh, it's probably like 20 degrees Celsius and just awesome dry air. Uh, my neighbor's getting their laundry off the line, and so they think I'm probably have finally lost it because I'm in the backyard talking to myself. <laughs> but anyway, um, I wanted to talk about goalie-specific training, goalie-specific off-ice training and what, what it is, because I think there's some misconceptions. Hi, Michelle. Actually, I think you'll like this. So we're talking about what off-ice goalie-specific training is. Um, and two things brought this up. The first thing was... Um, some oh look I got oh I didn't mean to do that <laughs> I just reached my pocket and I had a sticker on my fingernail <laughs> um, but so two things the first thing is um, last weekend when I was out in BC at the Carey Price thing and uh, Dave Hutchison was there from Ingold Mag and we were chatting and he said that a goalie coach he knows I can't remember what their name was it was like an interesting name like Raphael or something but <laughs> um, said uh, oh when you see Maria tell her to cool it on the goalie specific stuff because. Um, the goalies get enough of that already, and it's it's bad for their hips kind of thing was the gist of it. Um, hi, Karen. Which um, made my heart sink a little bit because um, I think that is somebody who probably just sees the snippets on Instagram and maybe doesn't even watch them all the way through, certainly doesn't read uh, Goalie Training Pro, the articles there, um, and has definitely never seen one of my programs because I'm a huge preacher that goalie specific is sort of a 20 to 30 percent seasoning you know it's it's what makes it different it's kind of like um my grandmother was greek so i always go back to food <laughs> but it's like you know ugh, some of you might not like this but it's sort of the difference between greek cooking and italian cooking there are quite a few threads of similarity and there are so don't get mad at me um but you know there's a seasoning and some of the things that make it really different and distinct and delicious both are delicious. I love both, by the way. I'm not saying <laughs> one's better than the other. But that's what that's what goalie-specific off-ice training is. You know, we still need to be explosive and learn to accelerate and decelerate and be strong and powerful and do cleans and front squats and hex bar deadlift and, um, you know, pushes and chins and everything like that. But we need to sprinkle in that 20 to 30 percent that makes it specific for you. A little more frontal plane movement, a little more up-down what it is not um and this is where i take exception someone who says oh you know that's that's uh too hard on their hips because if you watch the videos or, and have seen any of the programs even when we're down on our knees i mean we have to work this this what i call vertical agility we have to work that so we have to start from our knees but it's never um in the butterfly position there are some specific things that we will work on where we'll have that hip internally rotated. Usually it's a static thing, but that's because goalies come and tell me, hey, when I'm pushing across the ice with my one pad down, I can't keep my butterfly. My hip isn't strong enough and my, my pad will tuck underneath me. Um, you know, it'll fold back in. I can't keep it wide as I push. So we will do some specific things like that, but it's again, just specific to target those muscles. Um, we will not be, you know, smashing down repeatedly into the butterfly, um, or, you know, or in, onto our knees with our hips in internal rotation. If we are transitioning to our knees or from our knees, usually it's with our hips in neutral position. We're always wearing our knee pads and it's never a high volume thing. Um, <coughs> sorry, I still have my little cold cough. Um, so, so that is really, really important. So goalie specific training is not standing on a stability ball, juggling or lifting weights, although I know it looks really exciting and you see some goalies do that and it's like, wow, um, that doesn't really help because it's such a, number one, when you juggle, it's hand eye. If you're standing on a ball, you're not actually throwing the balls as fast as you can. You're throwing the ball so that it kind of comes right back to you so that you don't fall off the ball. Um, some people say it's good for core stability. Not really. There's about a million ways we can work your core stability better than that. Um, some people are like, oh, but it's really good for balance. Yes, it's kind of good for balance, but the thing to think about when you're on the ice is that um, 
you know, you're, you're, again, it, it's, it's trying to stay, trying to not move and trying to keep that sweet spot. It's not sort of a dynamic, like as explosive dynamic balance the way goalies need it. So again, just don't stand on the ball. Um, please, pretty please with sugar on top <laughs> and garlic. Cause my grandmother was Greek. <laughs> um, hi David, how are you? So, and then the second thing that made me want to put this out there is, um, is I saw a video on um, one of the social media outlets and I can't remember who posted it. And again, I know they're not on purpose trying to post something that's going to be harmful for athletes. There's, n there's no trainer, no strength coach in the world. I don't know in the world, but that I've met that's trying to, oh, this will really screw kids up or hurt their hips or cause long-term damage. It's always just a case like they didn't know. And sometimes what seems to make perfect sense when you don't understand the anatomy and the physiology and the biomechanics of how the body works, it's like, this makes perfect sense. We'll do this. It'll be great. <laughs> and it's enthusiasm, which is what I love about, um, like trainers and goalie coaches. It's, it's awesome. It's infectious, but it's just misguided. So what I saw, um, and I'm doing this because I didn't comment because I didn't want to sound like an ass but I wish I had, but again, now I can't remember who posted it and obviously I can't find it again, but it was, um, a couple goalies wearing their pads, um, like doing really goalie specific movements, like, you know, coming out to the top of the crease, dropping in their butterfly, backside recovery, uh, you know, um, reverse VH out again and, and wearing their pads. Um, so and, and that was like put out there as goalie specific off ice training. If those goalies live somewhere and I'm not being facetious, if those goalies live somewhere where they have no access to ice at all, then maybe that would be the way you'd have to go because, um, <coughs> because they just, they'll ne otherwise they'll never get a chance to move with their pads on and things like that. Hi Paul. Thanks for sharing the video. I appreciate it, man. Um, so it didn't say anything about that. So again, maybe I, maybe I only got part of the story and maybe I misunderstood. And these are athletes that have no access to ice. And that's the only way they can kind of practice some of those movement patterns. But I have a sense that wasn't the case. So, um, you know, you wear your pads when you're on the ice. Um, the pads actually add more mass, even though they're light, it, they add more mass to your legs. They put more torque on the hips. Um, and it is repeating patterns that are so, um, you know, add wear and tear to the hips over time. So it's like, it's like saying, um, showing a guy wearing all his football equipment, just getting like smashed around <laughs> in the gym, um, by like a machine that just smashes him or like having him just run into stuff over and over and be like, Oh, like football specific training. It's like, that's what practice is for. That's what on ice is for. Um, Jamal, hi, so what up? Jamal is one of my very best homies in the world. And she, she watches all my stuff and it's hilarious because she's not a goalie. Her girls aren't goalies, but she's my homie. I love you, Jamali. Um, hi, Julie. So, um, so that's, the, that's the thing goalie specific off ice training is not putting on your pads and doing movements you do on the ice that's actually on ice goalie specific training that you do with your coach or practice save it for that savor it for that the off ice stuff is building the strength the speed the stamina the vertical agility the frontal plane <laughs> the frontal plane agility thanks to the frontal plane agility you need um managing your hips, treating your hips like gold, the way a pitcher treats his shoulder. You know, you don't see a pitcher, um, you know, or I, or I hope you don't see a pitcher in the gym, like, you know, with a heavy cable, like just, you know, ripping the daylights out of their shoulder. You know, they're, they're doing things that are, are controlled, that are going to build up the shoulder joint, not break it down. So that's my little rant on what goalie specific training is. Um, but again, nobody's trying to hurt an athlete. It's just my opinion. It's just a lot of times it, it makes sense up here, but when you add in the anatomy and the physiology and the biomechanics and the injury risks, it's like, oh yeah, that's not such a good idea. So I love the enthusiasm, but let's, uh, let's just do the stuff that helps and leave all the rest.
out. So pads for on the ice. Unless you live somewhere there is no ice. And then you'll have to make it up as you go along. <laughs> I hope you guys are having an awesome um, Sunday as I am. Tomorrow I'm off to Madison, Wisconsin again for the uh, Network Goaltending NHL Goalie Camp. So um, we get a chance to hang out with some more amazing um, pro goalies. And um, I'm sure I'll have some tales to tell. See you.